central, we can create a sales invoice from a sales order. Let's go take a look. Under sales, we're going to create a sales order. Now a sales order is a document that's used to turn around and track orders that are outstanding within your system. Some businesses just prefer to use sales invoices. However, if you're running inventory and you're requiring to keep a log of work in progress that's, that's being picked and, and put through your business processes, sales orders is the right place to start. Let's click new. From the sales order, we have a customer name and we're gonna go straight to picking uh, Adatum and as common within Business Central there's uh, data broken down into pins otherwise known as tabs and you get this show more feature so we're going to have a look here at the sales order we've got the customers details we've got the sell to is who we're billing for the transaction we can see here the order and due date requested delivery date an external document number is common where we would enter the customer's purchase order. Under show more, you're gonna see more things that are relevant. For example, references, you've got responsibility centers, campaigns, opportunities, and so on. And these features generally come down to preference of use. Let's go back to the sales order. I'm going to sell this customer a conference table. I can see here that we've got a few columns here. I've got the item. I've got the description, which can now be edited. You can write in that description field. We're going to select one of these. We're going to scroll over and select the warehouse location. And for this transaction, I'm not using warehousing, so I'm going to keep this simple. But if you did use multiple warehouses, you'd select your warehouse that has that stock. The unit of measure, the tax that's applicable for this transaction, we can see the unit of measure, and we can see the unit price excluding GST. A few other things that are a little bit different to a sales invoice now is that you can see quantity to ship, quantity shipped, quantity invoice and quantity invoice, quantity to assign, quantity assigned. We can see also posting dates. We can also see our uh, dimensions that are added here. All right, going down a little bit further, common theme here to do with sales documents is a discount amount underneath the totals. Underneath the invoice details, we can see the currency of this transaction. We can see payment terms. We can see posting groups, etc. As we go further down, we can look at the shipping and billing. And this is where we can change to an alternate delivery address that belongs to the customer. I'm going to set this address here. Okay. And right now, we've got the address, but I want more information. So I'm going to show more. And depending on your workflow and whether you have a warehouse management system, you might want to say how it's being shipped. Okay, and at the point of shipment, what the tracking number is. So it's emailed to the customer or appended to the invoice. All right, we've got a few add-ons here that are available through extensions. One very interesting one here that sets sales invoices apart from sales orders. You can take a sales order and you can choose whether or not you do a prepayment on it. Prepayment means, if we use prepayment, that this must issue an invoice as a customer liability before the order will be accepted and released to the warehouse. I'm gonna leave this and we'll cover this in another tutorial. We have our sales order that's ready to go. We have decided that over here on the line, we're going to ship one. And it says that I can invoice one. The sales order gives us the ability to post. And as we go to post, we can see here, do I want to ship an invoice or ship an invoice? What are we doing? So I'm going to ship this one item. I'm going to hit OK. And as you'll see here now, quantity to ship is one. Quantity to invoice. So quantity to ship is blank. Quantity shipped is one. So it means it's shipped. Quantity invoice is one, so we haven't billed them yet. And you can see now per line how that plays out. Now in the scenario where we reopen this transaction and we decide to add a few more of these conference tables because they love them. And we're gonna ship two and three. We have ourselves now 
bit more of a comprehensive transaction that we can see here. I'm just going to set the GST to GST 10, just because I'm in Australia. That's weird. All right. Now, here, we're sitting here, and we've decided that we want, we've got two items on the second line and three on the third. We've already shipped the first lines here, and I can decide I'm now going to ship the two on the second line, but I'm going to ship zero on the third line. Okay? And... We can go post, post, ship. If we hit ship and invoice, it's going to invoice three units just here. So let's do that. Hit OK. You'll notice now this is all been quantity shipped, quantity invoiced. We're now going to put the three units here to ship and there's three to invoice. And again, posting. I could do that as a shipment. I could do that as an invoice altogether. Now, depending on your implementation, we usually will configure that on trigger of shipment, the customer receives a shipping docket via email. And on uh, process of invoice, the invoice is sent automatically to the customer. So this means the process of a sales order being posted will complete both a shipping notification and an invoice in the same step. Let's now complete this document. As soon as I do, this document is going to be archived. There is an option in here with sales orders. Within your sales and receivable setup to have archives. Traditionally, a sales order, when it's completed, is deleted. I'm going to turn on archive sales orders, archive return orders. I'm going to archive quotes. I'm going to go back now and now when we post this final transaction here and this invoice is out, this sales order is going to be stored as a archive instead of being deleted from the system. Let's go. Post, post, ship an invoice, off she goes. That document is now gone. It's no longer a sales order and you can search Archive sales order. Click. And here is our sales order that we had. And we can see the lines that were on it previously. And that's how you invoice from a sales order. Thank you. Mm -hmm.